So the engine of the car is blown, a tow truck shows up, and we've got to load the car onto the bed of the tow truck. So the bed tilts down at a 30 degree angle and a winch is gonna pull this car up onto the bed of the truck so then it can level out and drive off. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the free body diagram for this car and take a look at what forces are acting on the car as it's being winched up onto the bed. And we're gonna look at ultimately the tension in the cable pulling the car onto the truck bed. So, when drawing a free body diagram, uh, we need to remember our rules for, for free body diagrams. That is, we're gonna show all the forces acting on the car, and we're gonna draw arrows to represent those forces. So the first force we wanna take a look at is the weight of the car. Now the weight of the car, you'll remember, that is the force by gravity. That can be calculated using the equation mg mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Uh, now you'll remember the mass of this car, we'll put this up in the corner, was 2000 kilograms. So if we want to find the weight of the car, that is the magnitude of this force by gravity, we need 2000 times 9.8. We don't need to make this negative because we've already shown direction using this arrow. So it's 2,000 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared is going to give us 19,600 newtons. That is the weight of the car. That's how hard gravity is pulling down on this. Now, there are other forces acting on this car. The car sits on the ramp. It doesn't fall through the ramp like some kind of weird ghost or something. Uh, and that is because there is a normal force acting on the car. That normal force is up and to the left. So we call this Fn. Now we don't know how large Fn is. Um, there's, there's a bad habit that people have to think that Fn and Mg always have to be the same. And in this case, that is not true. Uh, in this case, to understand how large Fn is, I wanna forget about this cable here for a second. I wanna forget about the tow truck. And let's just treat this as though it's a car on a ramp or a block on a ramp if you wanna make it really simple or boring or something like that. If we were to allow this car to just roll down the ramp, there would only be two forces acting on it, gravity and the normal force. And we know those two forces would have to add up to be in the plane of the hill. That is to say, if the car was gonna accelerate down the hill, we know the net force would be down the hill. That just goes back to Newton's second law. Remember, Newton's second law says the sum of all forces in any axis is equal to mass times acceleration. In this case, that axis would be the hill or the ramp, whatever you want to call it. So, to understand how these fit together, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this, this normal force and redraw it down here using what's called the tip to tail method of vector addition. That is where the tip of one vector ends, I'm gonna draw the next vector I'm trying to add together. So I'm gonna put the normal force right here. I've just redrawn this. There isn't another normal force acting on the car way out here, okay? All I've done is I've taken this, I've cut it off the page and pasted it right there. I just didn't feel like playing with scissors right now, so it, I just redrew it right here. We know these two forces, Fg and Fn, are the two forces acting on the car in the absence of the cable. And so in the absence of the cable, the car's gotta go down the hill. Ultimately what that means is the resultant force from these two forces, Fg and Fn, needs to be down the hill. Now I'm not gonna draw this as a solid line because it's not really a force, it's a resultant. This force, which we're gonna call Fd, is the vector sum of Fg and Fn. Now, to determine Fn and Fd, we can do just a little bit of math and all of a sudden, what's going on here will hopefully be clear. You'll notice this ramp is tilted at 30 degrees. And this angle, through a little bit of geometry, happens to be the same as this angle right here. These are both 
30 degrees. And you'll notice what's occurred here is we have the normal force, which by definition is at a right angle to the ramp, and the force down the hill, which by definition is down the hill. That means these two have to be at a right angle. And what we've generated here is a right triangle. FD is the opposite side, FN is the adjacent side, and FG as the hypotenuse. And so from this, we can do a little bit of math and we can find this side right here, the adjacent side, which is FN, is in fact MG cosine theta. And FD, the opposite side, is MG sine theta. So we can do a little bit of math for this and we'll find the magnitudes of FN and FD. Uh, working out FN, we have 2000 times 9.8 times the cosine of 30. That's going to give us 16.974 Newtons. Now you play your own little sig fig game if you want here, uh, depending on how far you want to take that. Um, our force down the hill, we'll do a similar thing here. I'm actually going to work upward on this. So we'll have 2000 times 9.8 times the sine of 30. Well, that's going to be 9,800 Newtons. So going back to the original problem, we want to figure out how hard the cable is going to have to pull on the car this way. We'll call that tension in the cable. And remember, the sum of all forces in the plane of the hill is going to equal the mass times acceleration of the car on the hill. Now, when the cable is pulling this car up the hill, we want to pull it nice and slow up this ramp. So that means we're not going to have any acceleration. We're just going to pull this car at a constant rate. And so to use Newton's second law in the plane of the hill, sum of all forces in the hill is equal to mass times acceleration in the plane of the hill. We're going to have the tension up the hill minus the force down the hill. Now, yes, I understand the force down the hill isn't really a force. We should be dealing with gravity and FN. But when we deal with both gravity and FN, they combine to give us this thing we call FD, the force down the hill. And that's going to equal the mass times the acceleration in the plane of the hill. So realize the acceleration is zero. This means the tension minus the force down the hill, that's 9,800 Newtons, equals zero because there's no acceleration. So the tension of the cable needs to equal 9,800 Newtons. Put that in right here. And this is how we deal with the free body diagram for an object on a hill, or in this case, on a ramp. A faster car, a faster car, a faster car. I don't see, I don't see the fire car.